All those little details that you incorporate in your beats, like they all matter. Such a simple thing to do, but just a little detail like that can just get the club to go crazy. I go by the name of Illmind. I'm a music producer from New Jersey. Been producing for 20 years, worked with, man, almost everyone. Kanye West, Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Travis Scott, I mean, the list goes on. Being from New Jersey and just being so close to New York was a huge influence on my music. All the, the, the essence of New York rap definitely influenced my sound big time, and it still does. I grew up in a musical household. My dad was a musician. As I got older, I started getting more curious about like playing instruments and then eventually hip hop and then sampling and then getting lost in that world. I still keep a lot of the same process that I used to go through when I first started making beats. It's just now I get to just create everything. I can play around with the keys or play around with like an effect and create something brand new. And then treating those like those old samples that I used to, you know, use back then on, on actual vinyl. Possibilities are endless now. All right, so we're here at the historic Gold Digger Studios. I'm here with my complete control. I'm about to make a beat from scratch using complete now. And uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Right now, I just want to find inspiration. I want to find a, a, a patch or a texture that resonates with what I'm thinking right now. Like, I'm, I don't know what I'm about to make, so I usually just improvise and mess around and then see what we can come up with. So I'm going to open up hybrid keys. Uh, I love hybrid keys because there's some really cool, like, pad like synth type stuff so i'm just gonna build like a basic foundation and then start adding from there all right so let's get a good tempo going let's go 155 all right so i'm just gonna give myself a little countdown let's like lay something down and just start building from there so What I like to do with MIDI, like I, I love converting to audio because I feel like audio is like a much easier format to manipulate. So what I'm gonna do is right click and bounce in place, uh, which is a cool feature in Reason. So now I have my pads here as audio and then like, let's just keep building. So I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna quantize that, duplicate. It's just like a cool spacey sound. I think it's got like a cool like texture to it, emotion. It's got like an 80s sort of like synthesizer feel to it, which I'm like a huge sucker for. So let's quantize that. And then now I'm gonna to go to Lo-Fi Glow, which has like some really cool texture type synthesizers. I'm gonna to try to add like some personality to this little melody that I have going on. Okay, so now I have sort of like a cool little sort of idea, melody idea. Um, I, this is enough to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and join these clips and treat them like an audio group. And then I'm gonna play around with the pitch. So one cool thing I like to do is transpose up and down to evoke different emotion and you know see if this sounds better at a different key.
You see how much like darker and cooler that sounds when you pitch it down? So I have it down minus three from what I originally had. Um, and I like it, so I'm gonna keep it here for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this whole section here. So my end point, start point. And then what I'm actually gonna do is for this entire second section, I'm gonna go minus five. So minus five from here would be basically minus eight. So I'm gonna go to minus eight and then I'm gonna play this and you guys are gonna be able to see what I mean. So a pretty cool little thing you can do to like, you know, create more of like an emotion with your, with your melodies. At this point, I just want to like start layering this with more stuff, more interesting little textures and maybe some like little, you know, riffs here and there just to kind of give it a little bit more character. So I'm actually going to go to Retro Machines for this. Um, I love Retro Machines because it's kind of stays true to like the retro old school kind of like synthesizers that we all love. And I think for this track, it's appropriate. And also, I love sounds that already come with some grit and some dirt. And that's one thing I love about uh, these Native Instruments patches is like they, they're all just like ready to go. You know, as you guys can see, like I didn't have to do that much processing to this stuff. It's really just all built in there. So it makes my job easy. I love the categories section of this. And I can also search by character. I'm really just like searching for just real small little detailed things that will kind of like just add to the personality of the melody. You hear that little, little static in there? Like, it's just stuff like that. Like, that's why I love these patches because it. I don't have to do any additional work to make these sound like real dirty and lo-fi. So right now I'm just sort of like feeling it. I'm thinking of different drum patterns already. So I'm already like thinking about what kind of drums I want to put on this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Battery, which is awesome. I've been using Battery for like, 10 years, I remember using like a really old version of it for a very long time. Immediately, like I knew this is a patch that I want to use like texture wise. So I'm going to use this and see what we got. It's sounding pretty saucy. I think I'm gonna like speed up the whole beat. That's another thing I like to do too, is like adjust the tempo up and down just based on like the emotion. So I feel like I want, I want this to be like real up tempo. So we're gonna go 160 and see what that sounds like. Okay, so let me open up the MIDI and see if I could do some note repeats with some of these hi-hats. All right, so I'm gonna switch this to 32 count so I can really get in there and do some stuff. The thing about trap music is it's it's the hi hats is what like really carries the the groove and it kind of like reminds me of like a marching band where it's like you know just like real real percussive and real rhythmic and so you know changing the grid to 32 count for instance helps me to really get in here and program some ghost notes in there. The hi hats is it's really cool to like have different velocity strikes on it to give it more of like a human feel. So, you know, some of these ghost notes, like you can see here, I'm kind of like adjusting the velocity to each one of those so it doesn't sound so robotic. So we have a cool like little drum pattern going. I'm gonna look for a bass patch first and then I'm gonna lay down 
those kicks. So let me open up Massive X and see what we have for the bass. I'm gonna go to bass, and then we're just gonna start from the top and go through. Ooh, wait, sub. Ooh, see, that's cool. So I just wanna shave off some of the highs, so I'm just like basically lowering down the high gain on here, and some of the mids a little bit. Let's give it that real like deep, low rumble that I'm going for. Yeah, it's real simple. It's really just one note and then we'll do another note for the core change and then like that's pretty much it. So I think I want to keep it like pretty simple. With the low end here, I'm really just like being mindful of like whatever kick drum I'm adding later. So I'm, I'm really just like looking for something to fill in the low end. Like, you know, I want this to sound crazy in a truck. I want it to sound crazy in a club. That That's what's cool about Massive X is you can really get in there and, and adjust like the frequencies and the sustain and the attack on some of the sounds and you can really achieve that sound. So that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm going to select all on this base that I programmed. So I'm going to join those first. I'm going to select all. And uh, you guys remember earlier when I did the minus five thing. So I'm going to actually do that again. So select all and I'm going to go minus five on my notes. So one, two, three, four, five. And I think that should land on the right note for this section. Yeah, that's hard. All right. So I think I want to speed this up too. Let's go up to 162 just slightly. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the kick drum that I chose earlier that I really loved. This, this kick drum right here is crazy. This is the Bachman kit. So you just kind of like go through different ideas and then once you find the one that you like, you just keep it. So I'm just like trying different patterns, see what fits. So I'm going to quantize that, 116. To switch it up the vibe a little bit, like for this second part, I'd like to add like certain kicks here and there, like little ghost notes to just give it like variety, you know, so. Because right now the pattern is very simple, but I like it simple. So I don't want to go too crazy and complicated. So I'm just going to add like little kick drums here and there to give it a little bit of flavor and sauce. So especially on this second part. Alright, so I'm going to go to my pen tool here, bring up the velocity on those kicks. The song is kind of progressing, so now what I'm thinking about is like how can we format this, right? Verse, intro, pre-hook, hook, verse two, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this whole section and duplicate it. And then we're actually gonna take the kick out in the beginning. So let me duplicate this one more time. So we have three sections. Now I'm thinking about an intro, right? Like how can we start this? Thinking we don't need the bass in the beginning. I think I wanna cut this entire second section and just have that happen later. So I'm going to use my pen tool here, cut there, cut there. I'm going to cut this entire section. We're going to bring this back here and then we're going to have it set up like this. So I'm going to take my kicks out, see what that sounds like.
Okay, so now what I'm doing is like, I'm thinking about how to, like I said, how to format this. So I think I'm going to keep that same chord progression going and do the switch up later. So we're going to move this over to the right. I like just kind of staying on that chord for a second. So I'm going to bring this back here. That's going to sound crazy like when the kick drum comes in. So now for this like third section, this is basically like a verse part. So I'm going to take some of the elements out. So we'll take this out, maybe this too, see what that sounds like. Let's just add one more section here. Honestly, like this beat's pretty much finished. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting up the f the format of the song. So I have an intro, I have a verse, I have an idea of where I want the pre-hook to go, a, a hook, whatever, you know, just the different sections of the actual song. I'm thinking about where to put that. Um, and then right now I'm just like going to do like little transitions here and there. So like little cuts and just basically ear candy, right? So I'm going to do like a little chop. So I'm going to zoom in and do kind of like a pre-roll thing to go into this next section. So I'm gonna change my grid to 16th. I'm gonna grab my blade tool here and chop. So I'm gonna chop there and I want it to go like that. So we're gonna take this section out. I'm gonna Grab this and do kind of like one of these little drum roll kind of fills. As I'm creating the vibe in the process, like I'm thinking about where this can get played. So this little cut right here, transition, going into the next section, like this is, that's for the strip club. That knock, you know what I mean? All those little details that you incorporate in your beats, like they all matter, right? And that's like so such a simple thing to do, but just a little detail like that can just get the club to go crazy. The final step, honestly, here in Reason is basically, you know, put a limiter on it to bring the volume up a little more uh, without having to like squash it too much because I, I want to keep the you know dynamics in here i want like the drums to still like really knock through the mix real simple from here you know just like if i get in the studio with an artist or you know i just send it off to some people that i want to show it to and hopefully they record a song to it or we get in the studio record a song right on the mp3 when we get to that point where like we have vocals recorded and we want to take it to the next step then i'll go ahead and just like bounce each audio stem uh to wave and then i'll take that to the studio throw it into the vocal session and then we can start like really working on the song from there. The process of making a beat with Complete Now was super easy. All of the sounds were right there. I love the browser tab to be able to search what kind of texture, what kind of synthesizer I'm looking for. And the drums, I mean, I'm really impressed by Battery Now drums. They sound super crispy. All of the effects are there. They sound saturated. The snares are snapping. The kick drums are cutting through the mix. Made my job easy. And I didn't have to do any of the heavy lifting in terms of EQing and, you know, layering different drums. Like everything was just right there for me on the keyboard. I love Battery Now, man. All right, so this beat's finished. I'm super excited to see what you guys can do with this. So you guys can actually go to metapop.com to download the audio stems for this beat, create your own remix to it, and Native Instruments is actually giving away a bunch of really cool prizes to all the winners. I'm really curious to see what you guys got, so get to it. <laughs>